I have to say, this laptop is a rather different laptop by ROG. And this is the company's ultra thin, ultra portable convertible laptop. And yet, this isn't the first time that I've been using the ROG Flow X13 as well because a few months ago, we did a video with ROG Malaysia where we showcased the ROG Flow X13 alongside with the XG Mobile. But we are unable to review the unit of the Flow X13 at that time because of multiple different reasons, mostly is because of time constraint. And now we have much more time to soak in the experience that is offered by the ROG Flow X13 so that we can share it with you guys in today's video. So the ROG Flow X13, this is a rather weird laptop by the company but I'm not complaining because it is a really good laptop and it can compete with many other ultra portables in the market right now. And we'll start off first with the physical build of this laptop right here. The ROG Flow X13 is covered in magnesium alloy which contributes to its rigidity even though this laptop is pretty thin at only 15.8 millimeters and it is rather lightweight too, weighing in at only 1.3 kilograms. Now for the aesthetics, this laptop looks a bit nostalgic to me, I guess. Okay, remember when we talked about the ROG Zephyrus G14 acronym edition in December of last year? God, that feels like ages ago. Anyway, in that video, I said it's like a fever dream. And that design philosophy seems to have inspired the Flow X13 as well. And according to ROG, this kind of wave design here is called the gravity waves design. So, okay, I guess. And the default wallpaper of this laptop is also something along the lines of gravity waves as well. And truly, it does remind me of the Zephyrus G14 acronym editions design a lot. And while we're here, let's talk about the display. This laptop is using a 13.4 inch display with a 16-10 aspect ratio so its resolution is at 1920 by 1200 pixels and it has a 120Hz refresh rate as well. Now this laptop here is using a glossy display as you can see by all the fingerprints here is because it is a touch screen and the hinge on this laptop is also pretty good. It doesn't really wobble that much when I'm using the touch screen but I do think it can be improved. But uh, as for a convertible laptop, I think it's kind of acceptable. And speaking of convertible, of course, this laptop can be used in this standard laptop mode. And then I forgot what this is. This is tent mode, I guess. And then this is stand mode. And then this is tablet mode. Of course, you can use it however you want because it is a convertible touchscreen laptop after all. Now back to the design of this laptop. The deck on this laptop is also using the same gravity waves design as it has lines going through the entire wrist rest area as well. But they did take some creative liberty to quote unquote bend the gravity waves to create the ROG logo, which I'm pretty sure gravity waves don't bend at a 90 degree angle, but okay. And since we're here, let's talk about the trackpad. And yes, the gravity waves design is also covered by the trackpad as well, but they are actually underneath the glass surface. And the trackpad works fine most of the time, even though it caught me off guard at first because of its acceleration, which is quite extreme. It's not a big deal for me, but overall, it's still a very fine trackpad. And for the keyboard, it is something that I thought I wouldn't like it at first, but turned out I'm actually loving it. The keyboard layout here is fantastic and all of the keys have fantastic travel distance as well and I truly had fun typing on this laptop, honestly. Also, I should add that after typing for many hours on this laptop, I realized that the gravity waves on the wrist rest area actually helps to wick sweat away while providing some breathing room for my sweaty wrist right here. Uh, I don't think this is an intentional feature but it's really a functional design after all. But where's the power button, you might ask? And that is a good question because the power button is now placed on the right side of this laptop right here. But honestly speaking, I think it could have been so much better because by looking at the right side here, we also 
F, a USB 3 Type A 10 gigabits per second, and then another USB 3 Type C with 10 gigabits per second too. And the placement of these two ports though, it kind of obstructs the typical mouse movement area. So yeah. And also the USB Type A port is placed right beside the power button and they both have more or less the same size. So I actually tried stabbing a USB drive into the power button for quite a lot of times. So yeah. And on the left side here, we have a 3.5mm combo audio jack a HDMI 2.0B port, and then a rubber flap which reveals yet another USB 3 Type-C 10 gigabits per second, and also another proprietary port. Now, both the USB Type-C and the proprietary port is used to connect to the XG Mobile's connection, but to me, this is kind of just reminiscent of what the ROG phone has been doing for the past few years, because for the ROG phone, they have a Type-C and also another proprietary port right beside it. But both of these ports here are covered by a rubber plug. So yeah, I don't know why they're covering up a perfectly usable USB Type-C port. For me, I ended up just leaving the rubber plug because I don't want the USB Type-C plug to be covered. I mean, since this laptop charges using this charger here, it's a USB Type-C charger. And that means I can plug into either both sides to charge. And if I don't want to use it to charge, then I can transfer files using that 10 gigabits per second USB port as well. So why cover it up? Oh, by the way, I should also mention that this charger here is actually a 100 watt USB type C charger. And if you have any other chargers that can output 100 watts over type C, you can use it to charge this laptop as well. This laptop also switches between iGPU mode and DGPU mode automatically, which seems to be a hardware level because the NVIDIA GPU just disappears from Task Manager when it's in iGPU mode. And this actually affects the battery life as well. We got about 5 hours of battery life using iGPU mode at 60Hz because it also switches to 60Hz automatically while it's on battery. And now for the performance, for our specific unit of the ROG Flow X13 that we got here, it comes with an AMD Ryzen 9 5900HS, NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1650, 16 gigs of DDR4 4266MHz, and 1TB of SSD. Now obviously, this laptop can do some gaming because it has a GTX 1650, which is still rather powerful today. But nonetheless, I played the entirety of Portal Reloaded. Yes, the Portal 2 mod with time portals, which actually broke my mind, but it's just a very fun game. So I recommend you to check it out as well. So I played the entirety of Portal 2 Reloaded on this laptop. And uh, <clears throat> I also played some other visual novels on this laptop because its touchscreen makes it very suitable for those kind of games. So <clears throat> yeah. Just don't expect smooth gaming experience with newer AAA titles at high graphical settings though. I also edited a bunch of videos using this laptop while connected to the Dell U4021QW, that 5K 2K ultra wide monitor, that 40 inch one, which its review will be at TechRitus website, so you can check it out at the top right corner there. And uh, speaking of TechRitus, we'll also have to end our review of this laptop in particular right here because we do not have the XG Mobile with us. So if you're talking only about the Flow X13 alone, yes, this laptop is indeed very good and it kind of amazes me that ROG can make this kind of ultra thin, ultra portable, convertible laptop. And of course, there is room for improvement as well. For example, the USB port placements and also this rubber plug right here and finally for the price the specific unit of the ROG Flow X13 that we have here is priced at 6499 ringgit which to me actually seems like a pretty good price to pay for a laptop of this package because if you look at the other laptops with similar specs and also similar design and features we have the HP Spectre or also the Dell XPS series of laptops which is a lot more expensive but of course the XPS has upgradable SSD but the Flow X13, even the RAM and SSD are soldered onto the motherboard. 
And this is where the choice between the two variants of the Flow X13 gets a little bit difficult to choose from because since the RAM and the SSD is soldered onto the motherboard, you will only get 512 gigs of SSD for the cheaper version at 5999 ringgit. But if you want to upgrade a little bit, then you have to fork out quite a lot of money just to get that one terabyte of soldered SSD. But at the end of the day, it's still nice to see competition in the high performance Ultrabook segment of laptops. And I think the ROG Flow X13 is definitely a laptop that other companies cannot ignore. And that's it. That's all we have to share with you about the ROG Flow X13. I promise we'll be coming back and talking about the Flow X13 again, but that'll be in the future because we'll have to wait for the XG Mobile. And that video will be at Tech Creators channel, so do subscribe to them at the top right corner there. So, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section below, and we'll see you guys in the next video.